Good morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Welcome, welcome to everyone for a beautiful Easter morning worship. Welcome to all of our guests and visitors. Welcome to everyone joining us online. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, we celebrate, and we are so glad that the resurrection is here. So welcome. Let us let us join in worship today. If you will pause for just a moment on the back of your bulletin, you'll see upcoming announcements. Is there any announcements that anyone wants to share before we begin? We've been so busy this upcoming week, it's a little bit quiet, but it'll pick right back up in the next coming week. So we've got Sunday fun day and some things going on. Also, I wanted to let you know that this is two-sided. These are the dedications for our lilies this morning. Are there any prayer concerns or celebrations or updates that we need to know about this morning? Okay, Natalie's asking for prayers for her friend Rose, who is in the hospital, and she's non-responsive. So we want to lift Rose up in prayer. Mike? Yes, um, Mark, Mike's lifting up Mark and Jackie Willis. Jackie will begin her chemo this week for the next couple weeks, so we definitely want to keep them in prayer. How about any other prayer concerns, celebrations, or updates? Yes. Good. So Jeanette's sharing, Casey, we've been praying for, and um, they did get a diagnosis that there's a blood clot in the brain, but they are happy with that news because they can dissolve it and it's treatable. So we definitely want to pray for that to happen and for her to be made well with the medicines. Any other prayer concerns, celebrations this morning? You got one, John? Okay, I didn't hear all of it, but I think a family friend of yours, and it's, his name is Charlie, he's 16. We wanna keep him in prayer. Is that correct? All right, we'll keep Charlie in prayer. The family in prayer. How about any others this morning? All right, well, let us tune our hearts to worship.
Good morning. Please rise and join our voices together for the call to worship. We are risen with Christ. The Lord is risen. Eternal life is ours. The Lord is risen. Death has met its master. The Lord is risen. The way to heaven is open. The Lord is risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now, please join me in our song of praise on page 216. Christ the Lord is risen today. We'll sing all four verses. Christ the Lord is risen today. I'd like to invite our young people to come forward. Good morning. It's so glad to see you all this Easter morning. We've got Charlotte. Good morning. Good morning. You want to have a seat up there? It's so good. How's the week been? Easter? How's Easter going? No? Yes? No, it's not? I think you might not be telling the truth on that one. I bet you're having a good Easter. For breakfast? Nerd clusters for breakfast? All right, you're doing pretty good. Well, a happy Easter. Egg cheese sandwich, okay. And nerd clusters. All right, so do you see the flowers that we have in our sanctuary today? 
You see these? Do you know what these are? Do you know what these are called? Easter lilies. You got it. You know, one of the things that I like about Easter lilies, and maybe you have to use your imagination, but ever since I was a little kid, I have thought, you see how the side it comes out like that? I thought they looked like trumpets. Do they look like trumpets to you? No, not quite. They look like a nose to you? Oh, <laughs> well, I always think they look like a trumpet. And the reason I keep that in my mind is because one of the things about Easter is that we're supposed to tell the good news. And so to me, they look like little trumpets proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, that he is risen and we celebrate. Well, noses can tell good truth too, especially if it doesn't grow, right? Yes. Um, so the thing about Easter is we know the story, right? We know that Jesus died. We know he was in the tomb for three days and he arose from the dead, right? Well, we have a couple months later. Yeah, we got a little ways to go to Christmas. Yeah. But the thing about Easter is we know the story, but a lot of people in the world don't know the story. And so that reminds us that we're supposed to tell the story of Jesus. And that can be really hard to do. So I found a video. It's a very cute video about two young girls who are telling the story of Jesus and Easter. And I wanted you to see it. I think it'll just be kind of a little fun blessing for you, but I wanted you to see, and I want you to think about how you would tell the story to somebody who doesn't know. Now, they have some fun things in here um, that you'll see, but I want what it, what it does is invites us to think about what we would say and how we can tell the story, okay? So let's watch the video and see how these girls tell the story. My name is Eliana Anderson. My name is Elysia Anderson. Once upon a time, there was a bunny. <laughs> no. <laughs> One day, Jesus went to Jerusalem on his donkey. They all gathered um, twigs and they waved them in the air. They threw their coats on the on the ground. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna, it's the Son of God. Then on the last night of with his friends, he had a meal with them. They ate the Last Supper. He said that to remember him every time they had that supper. He went to the garden to pray, Gethsemane, Gethsemane, but the Disciples fell asleep with the donkey. After Jesus prayed, mean girls took them away. So dogs were all bad. Jesus said that he was God's son. They didn't like it at all. The people got so mad that they put Jesus on a cross. His mom and his friends were very sad because they loved him. He died because he wanted to forgive our sins. They brought him off the cross to a cave that had a stone so he couldn't get out. Saturday, they were all sad and they were all scared. On a Sunday, they went to look and they saw he was not in there anymore. The tomb was empty. An angel told them that Jesus had risen from the dead. The women came running to the disciples to tell them, but they would not believe them. Jesus came in the room. They were all surprised and they were all happy. Since they were so happy, they had a month together. After they had so much fun, Jesus went onto a top of a hill and he waved goodbye all to his friends. He said, I will come back someday. Why I'm gone, tell everybody about me. And he went up to heaven. The disciples, they told everybody that Jesus would always forgive them. Now I know that he loves me and my little sister Alicia and my mom and my dad and he loves everybody. That's why me and my sister love to dress up and go to church and be pretty as we celebrate Easter.
by celebrating, we say to Jesus, thank you and we love you. What do you think? Oh, it's cute, wasn't it? Do you think the disciples ate pizza? Probably not. Do you think the disciples had cell phones? Probably not. So it's kind of fun. But what I hope it does is help you think about how you can tell this story to someone. Do you think you could do that this week? Because Jesus wants us to tell others the good news, okay? And so if we just hold it in our heart that we're not quite finishing all that he wants for us, he wants us to tell. And so maybe you could think about it this week. Let's have a prayer. God, we thank you so much that we can share the good news with others. Help us to have just the right words. Bless all of our young people today and wish them a very wonderful, happy Easter. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you for being here, and you're going to go to Children's Church. A word of God for the people of God from 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4, and John 11, 25 to 26. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, please join me in our song of prayer on page 234. We'll crown him with many crowns, and we'll sing all four verses. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee.
able, would you please stand and rise and join with me in prayer, please? Almighty and everlasting Lord, we join with the women that very first early Easter morning and we come to the tomb only to find that the stone has rolled away. It is empty. You are no longer there. You are risen, alive, whole, made well, perfect. And Lord, we celebrate today the power of the resurrection. We celebrate your power to defeat death. We celebrate, Lord, what that means for us. And we celebrate that we can join in your resurrection glory. Surrounding us are Easter lilies filled with tiny trumpet flowers proclaiming the good news. Just like the rocks would cry out if we were silent, Lord, these flowers would cry out if we did not, proclaiming your risen glory. Gracious God, on this holiest of days, we come before you with awe in our hearts. We come before you in humble worship to give thanks that your victory is our victory. And we know that your power is our power. And because of your resurrection, we are invited to partake in that too. And God, we know what that means for us, that death is not the end for us either. We come here this morning, Lord, with thanksgivings in our hearts, but we also hold in our hearts worry and and concern and care for others that are maybe struggling on this day. And this morning, we especially wanna lift up in our prayers, Rose, as she is at the hospital and unresponsive. We pray, Lord, that you would just surround her with your healing power, surround her with your glory, with your peace, with your strength, and be with her family, be with her friends. And we pray, Lord, for healing in her life, we pray for your holy presence to fill her. We pray too for Mark and Jackie as Jackie will begin chemotherapy. And we pray, Lord, that it will be a time of healing in her life. We pray that you would work through the medicines and that you would bring um, a cancer-free news to them. God, we pray that all will go well for her and we pray for strength and we pray for peace. And we pray that you would continue to hold them close. We lift up Casey, Lord, and we pray that um, the medicines that they have for the blood clot will dissolve it and that Casey will be um, returned to herself, being able to do the things that she enjoys doing. And we pray for complete healing in her life. And we pray, Lord, for the good news that doctors and medicine can carry out in your holy name. We pray, too, for Charlie and his family. And we ask, Lord, that you would just surround them with your love and with your strength, with your healing presence and with your power. And Lord, we pray that you would just draw close to them during this time and lift them up in your holy hands and circle them with your strength, with your love and compassion. Today, Lord, we lift up this congregation that we might always be a light in the community, a beacon to others, shouting forth the good news. We may we pray that we may be your hands and your feet as we do your ministry and work in the community that we live in and in the world. We pray for open hearts that we might always hear you, that we might always see you and the people that we meet and that we might always do your work. God, we pray for the world that we live in. We know that there is so much unrest and violence. There are so many people suffering and struggling and we pray that we can be part of the solution. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to know where to serve and where to go. And we pray for the promise that um, peace will come. God, we lift all of this up in your holy name through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, as we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us to peace. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
A word of God for the people of God from Luke 24, 1 to 12. May God add God's blessing. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord, Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you why he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners. Be crucified on the third day, be risen again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to, to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. May the Lord add a blessing to these holy words. So one of my very most favorite Easter stories, and it may be one you've heard before. It's an old story. I've, I've heard it since I was a kid. I have no idea where the story came from. You can find it anywhere online. It's about a little boy named Philip. And Philip was eight years old, and he was born with Down syndrome. He loved to go to church, and he especially loved to go to Sunday school. So one Easter morning, his Sunday school teacher <clears throat> came in with a basket of those old pantyhose eggs. You know what I'm talking about? The little eggs that the pantyhose used to come in for women. And she pulled out <clears throat> this basket of eggs and she gave one to each of the children and she asked them to go outside into the nature and find something to put in their egg that reminded them of the resurrection. And so the children all went out and they began looking around and exploring everything. And they all came back together and they sat in a circle together. And one by one, the teacher opened their eggs and the children just oohed and hawed at everything they found. One of the eggs she opened and there was a flower in it. And one egg she opened, there was a twig in it. And one egg she opened, there was grass in it. And another egg she opened, the children laughed when a rock fell out. And then she came to the last egg, and it was Philip's egg. And the teacher opened Philip's egg, and it was empty. And the children began to grumble, saying, he did it wrong. Philip, you messed it up. And Philip tugged on his Sunday school teacher's sweater and said, the tomb was empty. So the teacher told the Easter story at that moment. And after the story, all the children congratulated Philip on such a clever idea of having an empty egg. About six months later, Philip's health changed and he passed away. And at his funeral, his entire Sunday school class walked up to his casket one by one, and each of them put a little empty pantyhose egg on top of his casket, a reminder to all of the promise of the resurrection. An empty egg, an empty tomb. You know, our world is full of empty promises. Maybe it's a product that will make us look younger or thinner or a used car that's supposed to run really, really good until you get it off the lot or a handshake agreement, 
but the other person doesn't uphold their end of the bargain. Or even with a loved one who promises and promises to do something different but simply can't do it. Every day we live in a world that offers empty promises that it can't keep. Sometimes those are on purpose, sometimes they're for profit, and sometimes they're by mistake. Yet contrary to the shortcomings of our world, God offers us empty promises that are filled with hope and joy and love and life. The empty promises of God are all we truly need. And on this Easter morning, we celebrate the emptiness that is all around us. So let's look at the emptiness. There were empty skies. On the day that Jesus died, Luke 23, 44 and 45 says, it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining. Even though it was only noon, the sun stopped shining, the stars stopped twinkling, it was dark, it was empty, and nothingness covered the land. These empty skies offer us the promise of God's sovereignty. Even when things seem like they're out of control, like our Lord and Messiah being crucified on a cross, we remember that God's hand is over everything. All creation bows to his glory, and the empty skies are a promise that we can trust God <clears throat> and trust all that is about to unfold. God is working in ways that we do not understand and cannot always see. We have an empty body. As Jesus died upon the cross, he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, Luke 23. At that point, Jesus gave up his breath and breathed his last. He emptied his body of his life-giving spirit, just the reverse of what happened in Genesis when God sculpted that first human out of the dirt and the clay of the ground and then breathed the breath of life into him. So this is the opposite. Jesus gave up his breath so that all that was left was an empty clay dirt vessel. Jesus' empty body reminds us of the promise of eternity. Sometimes we forget that at our core, we are a spirit. We've just been given a body to live in. The body is what we're most familiar with, but it's temporary. Our spirits live forever. We have an empty cross. When we see the empty cross, it reminds us of the promise of death. Jesus was nailed to the cross. He breathed his last, crying out, it is finished. He suffered, his blood, stained, his blood stained the very fibers of the wooden beams. I know it seems like an odd promise to highlight the promise of death, but if Jesus didn't die, then the power of the resurrection is dimmed. He died and we will too. However, the promise of death leads us to claim the promise of hope. An empty cross also offers us a promise of hope. Just like death was not the end for Jesus, death will not be the end for us. When we see the empty cross, we know that Jesus came down from it. He didn't stay there. He's not in agony, hanging on the cross, suffering. He's risen, he's whole, he's alive. And he offers us that hope too. No matter what happens in this world, we will rise we will be made whole. We will be offered new life in him. We have an empty day. Jesus died on Friday. Scripture tells us that Joseph of Arimathea took his body and placed it in a tomb. The women watched and saw how Jesus was laid. Luke 23, 56 says, Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. The Sabbath was Saturday. It was an empty day. From Jesus' death 
on Friday to the resurrection on Sunday. And this empty day offers us the promise of providence. All things happen in God's time. We must simply be patient and allow God to work. Just because things don't look good on Friday doesn't mean the miraculous isn't going to happen on Sunday. We can trust God's timing and know that it's perfect. We have an empty tomb. The next morning when the women went to the tomb with their spices to properly anoint Jesus' body, in both John and Luke's gospel, the women found the stone of the tomb already rolled away. In Matthew, the scripture tells us there was an earthquake and two angels came down and rolled the stone away. But Matthew 28, 6 says he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. No matter how the stone was rolled away, the tomb was empty. And it wasn't opened to let Jesus out. It was opened so we could see inside. He wasn't there. And it was opened so we could see the truth that this tomb is empty. Jesus was already gone. Jesus was already risen. The empty tomb offers us the promise of life. Death has lost its sting. The sealed tomb seemed to say that death had won, but an open, empty tomb says life wins. The one who has mastery over death has overcome, and we are offered this same promise, we will win too. Jesus Christ has opened the door to salvation. We have empty searching. When the women arrived at the tomb, they were confused. The tomb was open, it was empty. The angel greeted them asking, why do you look for the living among the dead? Their searching is empty. They're looking for someone who's not there. In their empty searching, they offer us the promise of presence. As a human, Jesus could only be in one place at one time. But risen to new life, and later when he would ascend to heaven, Jesus would give us his Holy Spirit to be with us. We will never again search in vain because Jesus is with us every step of every day. He's always there when we seek his presence. We have empty words. When the disciples told, when the women told the disciples what they had seen, Luke 24, 11 says they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. To them, the women's words were empty. The empty words are ironic, offering us the promise of belief. The disciples didn't believe the women, yet Peter believed enough that he ran to the tomb to see for himself. Faith is believing that the impossible is possible. In faith, we hold the unbelievable in our hearts. And lastly, we have empty linens. Luke 24, 12 says, He saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. The burial linens that Jesus wore were lying in the tomb empty. These empty linens offer us the promise of paradise. When Jesus was crucified, there were two others, one on either side of him. One confessed belief in Jesus, and Jesus offered him these words from Luke 23, 43. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus no longer needs the clothing of death. Now he wears the clothes of paradise. Revelation 19 says he wears many crowns and a robe dipped in blood. In heaven's paradise, Jesus wears the robes of glory stained by his sacrificial love. The empty linens show us the way to paradise. On this Easter morning, the tomb was empty. But you know, in the emptiness, amazingly, it contained everything that we need. Thanks be to God for empty promises. We have a video to share.
When I was a little girl, I loved getting gifts. I loved birthday presents, Christmas presents, and encouraged my parents to celebrate other holidays, including my half birthday. I particularly liked Easter because it usually involved chocolate. <laughs> I love chocolate way too much, but I do. One Easter when I was eight, my parents brought out an exquisite looking gift. It was perfectly wrapped with shiny gold wrapping paper, neatly cut, folded, and taped. You couldn't even see the tape. And on top sat a red ribbon that was just waiting to be untied. I asked if it was for me. My daddy said it was and that it was a very special gift. I was so excited to open it, I could barely stand it. When Easter morning arrived, I was bursting with excitement. I asked if I could finally open it, and well, they said I could. So I quickly took the present in my hands, untied the ribbon, ripped off the top, and looked inside the box. I stared in disbelief at what I saw before letting out a big old wail. That's right, I cried. Fortunately, my parents knew what I probably hoped it would be, and so they also handed me a bag of chocolates and a stuffed Easter bunny. And that's what I really wanted, <laughs> the important stuff. I mean, what do I know? Who knew one day I would see that beautifully wrapped present for what it was, the greatest gift I've ever received. What's even better is this is a gift for you as much as it is for me. Hopefully you won't cry when you open it because you see, the greatest gift you've ever received is empty.
On this Easter Sunday, we remember how much we have to be thankful for. Our God has blessed us, redeemed us, and offers us eternal life. This morning, let us give in response to all that we have been given. May our gifts reflect our gratitude and our love. We collect our offering in offering trays uh, on the communion table where you can place your tithe and offering when you exit. To those watching at home, if you feel inclined, you may mail in your offering, drop it by the church, or use the Easy Tie app to electrically give. May we give generously and joyfully. Thank you. Gracious God, you love this world so much that you gave your one and only son that we might be called your children too. Lord, help us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in that mighty grace and to use these tithes and offerings to spread your good news to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will share in communion in just a few moments. If you did not pick up one of these little communion cups, we have some in the back or we have some in the front. You're welcome to um, grab one of those so that you can share with us. In our congregation, anyone who believes in Jesus Christ and has accepted him as Lord and Savior is invited to this table. This is our Lord's table, and he is the one who invites us. So all are welcome to share, and we hope that you will join Christ at his table. Greg Young shares a story about a London businessman named Lindsay Clegg, and he was selling an old warehouse that had been abandoned, had been vacant and empty for many, many months, and he was showing around a prospective buyer who came to look, and he was showing him, and there were windows that were broken by rocks, and there was trash and litter all around. There were doors off hinges. It was really a mess. And he tried to kind of say to the, the prospective buyer, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll fix all these windows, and I'll fix all these doors, and I'll clean up all this trash, you know, if you want to buy it. And the businessman looked at him, and he said, don't, don't worry about it. You see, I'm going to do something completely different with this building. I don't actually want the building. I want the site. And as I was thinking about that, when we come to this table and we share in the elements of bread and cup, we remember that our Lord makes all things new. He wants us to let go of all the rubbish all the trash, all the things that we're holding in our hearts. Let go of the brokenness. Let go of the anger and the ego and the pride and all of those things that hold us back. He wants us to empty ourselves so he can come and fill us. He doesn't want our building. He wants the site. He wants our heart. He wants to fill us so completely so that his glory, his love, his light his goodness shines through us. So as we come to the table this morning, I invite you to lay down what you need to lay down and invite the risen Lord to take up residence in your sight, in your heart. Let us come to the table.
Now please join me in our song of communion on page 53. Morning is broken and we'll sing all three verses. to this table remembering the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples. It was there that he took a loaf of bread before them and he blessed it and then he broke it. And he said to his disciples, take and eat this each and every one of you for this is my body, it is broken for you. And then after they had supped together, Jesus took a cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's poured out for the forgiveness of sin. As often as we eat the bread, as often as we drink the cup, we do so in remembrance of him. Lord, we remember this Easter morning that even though your body was broken and your blood was shed, death could not hold you. And through your resurrection, we too can live. Thank you that the grave is now only a journey into the presence of God. You have removed the sting of death so that we may truly live. Help us celebrate this miracle of life every day as we seek you and follow your plan for our lives. Now we will live in your presence forever. Amen. Let us share together the bread of life and the cup of salvation. After church this morning, we have a time of fellowship with some um, coffee and cookies and conversation and time to just get to know each other. And so I would like to invite all of you to come downstairs after worship today and join in and and maybe have a, a snack if you so choose. If there is anyone this morning that would like to unite with this congregation by a transfer of membership or by a um, confession of faith, you're invited to come forward as we stand and sing. Now, please rise me, rise with me and join in our song of commitment on page 224. We'll sing all three verses. Christ arose. Oh, 
triumph for his cause. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watched his bed, Jesus my Savior. indeed. May we go from this place filled with Easter promises, filled with the light, love, and joy of our Lord and Savior, and may we go from this place to share the good news. May the Lord bless us until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>